The word legend gets tossed around rather freely these days. There's nothing wrong with that. After some 50 years of unmatched technical and cultural progression, skateboarding's cast of notables is chock full of legendary. However, in the case of Ray Barbie, legend should be in flashing lights and in all caps. Here's why. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> sure that's not a lowercase. Ray started skating in the summer of 84. My buddy got a Veriflex Vectra for his birthday, and we had rode bikes all the time together around town, and he had that Veriflex Vectra, and I had my bike, and I could tell he was having way more fun than I was. His first board was a Sims wood kick. Wood kick? Is that a board? It's called a wood kick because it didn't, they didn't do the mold, right? They added the piece of wood on it to create the kick. <laughs> so I guess that piece right there was the wood kick. Oh yeah, that's right, okay. And the guy who invented that uh, used to collect royalties from all the skateboard companies for having a kick tail. He made a block that was a kick tail and then he patented the idea of a kick tail. From Randy Smith, Ray appropriated the step hop, Randy's version of Neil Blender's No Comply in Orbs 43. Randy was the first one that I seen, he called them step hops, but Randy was the first one that we seen do it off the ground like an ollie, right? And so you use this part of your leg to bounce, you know, to, to level the board out. We were just like, dude, we want to learn that. In 1986, Ray won the first contest he entered without a sponsor. He then got on Alva before switching to GNS. That time, like, if six months felt like two years, like, I think I rode for Alva for maybe six months. We were all about getting support to go to contests, and we weren't really getting too much support that way. And so our friend Troy Clower rode for uh, GNS, and we just saw like GNS was like clothing brand also with skateboards, and we would just see his packages, and we we're like, man, you're living the good life. He was like, you know, I'll talk to him. I think we can get you on, you guys on the team, and we we got on the team. In 1987, he joined the Bones Brigade, and we were lucky to have him. I'll never forget, it was the end of the contest, um, Andy Howell won, and um, everybody was starting to filter out, you know, it's in the Valodrome, so you're like in this dome area, right, and everybody's filtering out and you're leaving, and I saw like Chet with Stacy like on the other end, and I saw Chet pointing, and then them walking, and I was kind of like, it was kind of one of those ones like, and I just was standing because I was still waiting for my friend, and then Look back, and then there's Stacy and Chet, and then Stacy introduced himself and was like, "Hey, would you like to ride for Pal Peralta?" And then I was like, "Okay, I've got to believe this." <laughs> Adding to technique, flow, and style, Ray also brought a hefty serving of diversity, which up to that point had been a predominantly white bread pastime. Unlike the neon glam beach volleyball styles of the '80s vert scene, Ray's casual attire and cruising lines through the LA sprawl set the table for city kids of all stripes and colors to make skateboarding theirs. What do you got against the volleyball styles of 80s vert scene, anyway? Like growing up in the 80s, skating vert, it's like you had to know the guy who knew the guy that had the ramp. Street skating comes around and now it's like all we need to do is get a skateboard and we can have fun, go skate. That's what changed things. He kind of broke down racial barriers. There was no race with Ray. Now it's like he, he was a little bit punk rock. He had the guitar thing and the music thing going but he was black, you know, so he crossed all lines, and I, I really, it really opened my mind. By the time Public Domain came out in 1988, Stacy Peralta knew he had found something special. Uh, it's tough to be like, yeah, I was special. You know what T Stacy did, what was great, was that he saw that because street skating is accessible, that it's gonna go this way. And he saw that Maybe I played a part of him coming to that conclusion. I was like a small kind of part of that, right? And definitely from the response of public domain that validated it. It's just like, okay, yeah, this is the direction, you know? For Band This, Stacy honed in exclusively on Ray's flow and lines. A lot of the way we went out and filmed those video parts, it was just, for lack of a better term, it was just organic. Stacy would see the shot and be like, hey, let's get out and skate this. And it was more of like, is this setting nice? Okay, cool. Do your thing. In October of 89, Ray's first pro ad appeared in magazines and his iconic ragdoll graphics were unveiled. 
so doing a graphic for Ray was like it was a complete fresh start. It was, it was like working from a blank slate, uh, unlike anything else that had come before on The Bones Were Good. In June 1990, Spike Jones shot Ray's Pro Spotlight. Spike was the first dude that made me like wait for a certain time before we could go shoot a trick. He was the first dude, like, and I was, I was like, what? Like, because when we were working on that, um, I took him to the spot, and it was like 12 o'clock, and like, I'm all ready, right? We get out of the car, and I'm like, okay, I'm ready to get the trick. And um, Spike looks at it, and he's like, okay, cool. Uh, we'll come back at about like 4.30. I was like, like, I'm ready to do this right now. But then when it comes out in the mag, I'm like, okay. And then I started getting excited when I'd go shoot with Spike because I was like, oh man, his photos are different and I could tell he was on some other thing. In 1990, Ray had a brief stint on Airwalk shoes before joining Vans for the next two decades. It might have just been like, huh, let's try something new. It's one of those things where you're like, huh, let's try this out. Grass is greener on the other side. And you're like, no, it's not greener at all. <laughs> I went, went back and was like, okay, this is where I live. The Waffle Soul. <laughs> In 1991, Ray followed Lance Mountain, leaving Pal Peralta to help start the firm. Um, once Stacy left, there was this sense of like, captain's gone, who's steering the ship. We were just kind of still, I was kind of like, huh, what's going on? And Pal had talked about having Lance head up a sub company within Powell. That made the most sense. Lance was like, hey, I'm gonna do this, you wanna be a part of it? And I was like, Please. Lance realizing like, you know what? No matter what, it's not gonna be my company. I'm still gonna have to answer to George. I'm gonna do this on my own. I was like, even better. Like, it was scary, cause it's like, lose that paycheck and get into something that you don't, you know? <laughs> but, but I didn't care. Because you have to be a part of something that you're excited about. After his parents bought a house in Corona, Ray appeared in the company's first video, La Buena Vida. Lance used to always get on me, man. He'd be like, he's like, so you've been skating? I'm like, yeah, I did this and that. He's like, you filming? You see it? No. I'm out in Corona, I just came with my friends. <laughs> I had to go back and redo so much stuff. In 1994, Ray had the last part in the firm's dedicated to skateboarding video. Um, did I? I don't even remember. <laughs> For Ray's 411 profile section in 95, Barbie played guitar and sang his own song. Power lines marked the beginning of a more public stage of his musical interests. By that time of the 411 profiles, like I had been playing, playing in bands and stuff. And so I always had the idea of like, oh man, I'm gonna do, write a song for my own part or whatever, do your own music kind of thing. In 2002, Ray released his debut EP, Triumphant Procession, Galaxy Records. The following year, the firm released their big video, Can't Stop. We did a bunch of the music for the Can't Stop. I remember like me and Lance at my wedding, I mean we talked about we were talking about like, man, it'd be cool to do like Stacy did where it was just all original music for the video. I always thought that was rad. How it was important to him to like we'll do our own score. In 2005, Barbie released another record on Galaxia in full view to critical acclaim. Ray played guitar, bass, xylophone, and drums. It got to a point where I couldn't play in bands because of traveling for skating. And the bands were wanting to get more serious and, and they wanted more commitment and I couldn't do that, I'm out skating. So it ended up with me on my own, having these instruments and having a recorder. On March 13, 2006, the firm closed up shop for good and Ray found a new home at Element. You know, so when Lance pulled the plug on the firm, that was like, that was a, that was a loss. But man, I can't say enough about what I learned through that experience, what we went through during the ups and downs of the firm. And, Thankfully, Element saw worth in what I could bring to what they're doing and gave me an opportunity to be a part of the team. And so I definitely didn't want to go anywhere else in the sense of I didn't want to leave skateboarding. Around that time, Ray also got sponsored by Fender Guitars. By 2012, almost three decades since he repurposed it from Randy Smith, Ray's step hop became the hottest new trick since the Ollie. Kevin Turpening, Jake Johnson, and Pontus Al lead the charge. That's what skateboarders do. Get sparked off by an idea and then you run with it. And I think that's what I appreciate the most about skateboarding is it doesn't just emulate, like it creates something from it. Like use it as a launch pad to, to go somewhere else. Stefan Janowski, I remember on his feed, just the 180 step hop on a quarter pipe. Was, Probably the most amazing one I've ever seen. 
In 2015, Vans released their first ever video, Propeller. That was a tough one for me because the video, because I got hurt, and so it's kind of bittersweet in the sense of like, man, I wanted to get more, but it is what it is. <laughs> Nature skateboarding. <laughs> Ray Barbie believes every young skateboarder should know three things. Always make sure you're having fun, cherish the community, be creative. And now I feel like I'm acting. <laughs> <laughs> Ray Barbie thinks he will be best remembered for like those flat ground tricks that me and my friends stumbled across. Um, I think to this day that's what probably um, I get associated with the most. All things considered, however, what truly makes Ray a legend is Ray himself.